Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Sawyer Center on the campus of Southern Nazarene University. Crimson Storm women's basketball is on the air. This afternoon, the Crimson Storm take on Missouri Southern State University in non-conference action. Hi, everyone. Luke McConnell coming to you from our broadcast position here at the Sawyer Center. Delighted to have you with us for this Thanksgiving matinee between the Crimson Storm and the Lions, two participants in the Central Region Tournament last season. It should be a fantastic matchup. Both of these teams come in undefeated. The Lions come in 2-0 this season. Wins over GAC foes Harding and Henderson State up in Emporia two weeks ago. And the Crimson Storm come in 4-0. Winners of 18 consecutive games in the regular season. Off a win last Saturday against Central Oklahoma here at the Sawyer Center. Missouri Southern under head coach Ronnie Russell won their first MIAA tournament title since 1996, a season ago, advanced all the way to the Central Region Finals against host Minnesota Duluth before dropping an absolute heartbreaker to the Bulldogs up in Duluth back in March. The Lions led that game by 17 with five and a half minutes to play. An opportunity to go to the NCAA Elite Eight. But it went slipping through their fingers as Duluth was able to get the comeback win 77 to 76 on their home court. A couple key departures from Missouri Southern last year. Lacey Stokes, the All-American guard, transferred up to Division I Missouri State, and Haley Grant transferred out to Southwestern Oklahoma State. We'll see her later in December. Four seniors departed from that team as well, so there's quite a few new faces on this Missouri Southern State roster, but also quite a few familiar faces as well, led by senior guard Chrislyn Jones, a native of Edmond, Oklahoma, Santa Fe High School product, Several Oklahoma products on this team, including several in the starting lineup, including Edmund North alum Ryan Franklin, a redshirt freshman center who's averaging 17.5 points and 13 rebounds through two games this season. Crimson Storm, again, got the big win over Minnesota State Mankato two weeks ago nearly to start the season. And the non-conference slate full of challenges this year, including today's matchup and Saturday's matchup with Lubbock Christian. The Crimson Storm have plenty to deal with each and every time out, taking on a lot of in-region opponents in this non-conference slate. So it should be a fantastic matchup here this afternoon. Hopefully we'll be able to get a good crowd on hand as well for this matchup between two of the top teams in the Central Region. Let's run through the Great American Conference standings for you here in the early part of the women's basketball season. East Central also undefeated, joining the Crimson Storm. SNU won of four undefeated teams in the GAC Conference thus far. East Central 3-0, Northwestern 4-0, Southern Arkansas 5-0. Of course, SNU 4-0. Harding and Henderson State, Arkansas Tech and Washita Baptist each with a single loss a piece, Harding 4-1. Henderson State taking on Pittsburgh State in Arkadelphia this afternoon. That's a big non-conference tilt for the GAC as a whole. Henderson State, again, having lost to Emporia State, or beaten Emporia State, rather, and lost to this Missouri Southern State squad up in Emporia a couple weeks back. Pittsburgh State took down Washita Baptist last night and then moving across the street to take on Henderson State this afternoon. Southeastern Oklahoma State, 4-2. and 3-2 two. and two to Arkansas Monticello. Southwestern is 2-3 and three in Oklahoma Baptist, 1-2 and two through three games this season. So that's how the GAC stacks up as of now. So we'll keep you posted on scores from around the league. This afternoon, again, halftime score in Arkadelphia. Pittsburgh State leads Henderson State by four. Earlier today, up in Edmond at Oklahoma Christian, Texas A&M International, 86 over Southeastern. The Savage Storm with just 65 
today in that one. So, should be a great matchup here this afternoon. A lot of Oklahoma flavor on this Missouri Southern State squad, so a good contingent of green and gold in the house this afternoon as well. It is obviously Thanksgiving break, so students not on hand for this one, so we'll see the sort of crowd the Crimson Storm can drum up this afternoon. Right now we're going to turn it over to our pregame conversation with head coach Trent May, get his thoughts on the matchup, and wrap up things from Saturday's win over UCO. This is SNU Basketball. And welcome into our pregame conversation with SNU head coach Trent May, the Crimson Storm at home, taking on Missouri Southern State today at the Sawyer Center. And Trent, going back to last Saturday's win over UCO, another big notch in your non-conference belt there. Yeah, it was fun. Um, good atmosphere, actually, you know, for a Saturday and preseason uh, pre play. And I uh, really liked how our girls responded. And there's always going to be ups and downs in games, a little bit of adversity here and there. We say adversity, it's always measured differently. But there's just some things that we were, you know, trying to overcome and trying to get out of a slow start. And uh, girls did a really great job responding after halftime. You've talked a lot about the chemistry of your team thus far this season. Uh, what are some other things that have stood out to you here through the first four games? Well, I think chemistry and culture go hand in hand, and I think our girls do a good job with having basketball culture. Um, so they're going to play hard for each other. Or one of our slogans is, is um, you know, we fight together, and I think our girls do a really good job of that. And and so I, I like how there's just um, a great synergy on the floor between our girls. Even if it's not great basketball in the moment, they're going to figure out a way to get back to great basketball, and that's their intent. And they're all in agreement with that, and so that's a great thing. And so um, excited for that to see how that continue progresses because talent and culture, um, you know, really, uh, you know, um, can exhibit great things, and that's what we're about. You got a tough non-conference schedule with another tough one today against the Lions. When you're putting together your non-conference schedule, how do you balance testing your team and also giving opportunity for players to to get their feet wet in game action? Yeah, so it's it's a delicate balance, and you only think you get it right after you go back and look at it. So during the during the fray of it, you're like ah, you know. But it's um, I think it's good. I think you know, it's again you 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 know that um, you're going to be battle tested before you get to conference. Conference is not easy. There's uh, a lot of great coaches, and so there's just nothing that no matter what what the what the talent um, looks like on either side, it's just you're, it's always going to be a tough match. And so I think us preparing for that preseason does you know prepares our players well, um, and it's fun when you have a veteran group that um, that understands what big basketball games are about and you know about playing you know pressure games. And so you know I think for us you know there's just another opportunity today to really to you know to. Um, put our best foot forward to making sure we get the best outcome and so it's um but it is it's a balance and you you know you just look at the teams in our region and those are where it's at um and so we're trying to play as many teams in our region as we possibly can because at the end of the day once you because you have to take care of conference regardless of who you play in pre preseason so once you do that um and you know the preseason like we're doing right now it's like you you put a you know try to get an exclamation point out of that as best you can and then you know go take care of conference but you have to do that anyway Missouri Southern, the opponent today, I just had to ask if you and Coach Russell drew this one up on a napkin in the hotel restaurant up in Duluth back in March. Right, yeah, no, we were, we were hoping to just schedule, again, in-region games, super important for both of us, and so um, we were fortunate to get this end of it, you know, the side, and so we'll return the favor to them next year, and so, um, but yeah, it's just a, a good uh, in-region, you know, matchup to, um, to get, you know, get ready before, you know, Thanksgiving break. Very similar team to you guys in the sense that you know lose some lose some pieces, return a lot from last year's region finalist team. What challenges do they possess? Uh, I think they do a good job pushing the ball in transition. Um, they're a very balanced team. I think five of their players right now are scoring or averaging double figures, and so um, I don't think you can just really focus on one without worrying about the others. And so I think it'll just be complete team defense is what we're looking for for us. And then for your team, what are you looking for um, as far as you know? Every game is a game and one that you have to rise to the moment, but um, do you look for them to rise to a bigger name opponent at times? Well, I think in the few games that we played so far, you know, you just, you wonder, you wonder about the, you know, are we playing up to, you know, our standards or are we playing to, you know, the, the opponent? And so I think that's the part is, you know, it's hopefully it's every game in our program because where we're trying to go, what we're trying to do, every game matters. Um, it's like the college D2 level right now um, and so uh, yeah it's a big big step for us and I, you know, I think our girls will do a good job we got it we've got to be in more sync um, offensively and we got to do a better job you know understanding what's 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 given at that moment taking advantage of it again on the offensive side of the ball that's where our you know I'm hoping today that you know our defense is always 
most of the time has been on point, and so we're hoping you know, that'll continue as well, but we just got we got to be more efficient on offense. Good second halves in both games last week. How do you get more in sync to start the game? Well, we've changed up our practice a little bit. We're, we're going a little bit harder at the beginning, and so we're kind of easing into it. We're like, get them warmed up, and you better be ready to go. You know, because again, I think that's indicative of how you start games. And so um, we're safe. It works, you know, hopefully. Um, so, you know, I, get, I don't know if there's any team right now that's playing four, you know, or two great halves of basketball. Um, and so for us right now, it's, that's what we're hoping to do is, you know, put really two good halves together. Well, Trent, thank you so much for your time. Look forward to seeing your team out on the floor against the Lions. Appreciate it, man. Thanks for being here. And welcome back to the Sawyer Center. The starting lineup is being introduced. Let's run through those for you first. For the visitors, Missouri Southern State under head coach Ronnie Russell in his eighth season in Joplin. Number one, senior guard Chrislyn Jones, 5'6", from Edmond, Oklahoma. Number four, junior guard Mia Topping, 5'8", from Fort Worth, Texas. Number 10, redshirt junior guard Caitlin Honeycutt, 5'9", from Danville, Arkansas. Number 20, junior forward Reese Webb, 6'1", from Muskogee, Oklahoma. And in the middle, number 31, Ryan Franklin, 6'3", redshirt freshman center from Edmond, Oklahoma. And now for your Southern Nazarene Crimson Storm under head coach Trent May in his sixth season at the helm in Bethany. First up, number four, senior guard Lauren Reether, 5'5", five, five from Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Lauren averaging 18.5 points and 5.5 and rebounds per game thus far this season. Number five, senior forward Hannah Giddy, 6'2", from Melbourne, Australia. 
averaging nine points, ten and a half rebounds per game thus far this season, along with six assists. Number 12, senior guard Emily Monahan, 5'9", from Melbourne, Australia. 13 points per game and three rebounds per game thus far for Emily. Number 20, sophomore guard Shannon Burton, 5'7", from Maitland, Australia. Six and a half points and two and a half rebounds per game this season for Shannon. And rounding out the starters, number 24, senior guard Abby Giles, 5'7", from Searcy, Arkansas. Averaging 11 and a half points and nearly seven rebounds per game thus far this season. Again, it is the sixth season for SNU head coach Trent May, who is coming up on 100 wins at SNU in his tenure there. Assistant coaches Kayla Tucker, Sidney Salvato, and Greg Gilman. Missouri Southern coach Ronnie Russell is assisted by Bryant Porter and Kaylin Strawbridge. Should be a great matchup here this afternoon. A pretty solid crowd for the day before Thanksgiving. We're delighted to have you with us. Missouri Southern in black today. MSSU in green, outlined in gold across the front. SNU in their home whites with Storm across the front in red. Giddy wins the tip, but Chrislyn Jones picks it up, gives it over to Topping and the Lions. Moving left to right to start the game, we'll have the first possession. Up top to Webb, left wing to Honeycutt. Honeycutt trying to post up Ryan Franklin, knocked out of her hands out of bounds by Giles. Franklin, 6'3", out of Edmond North. Helped the Huskies win the 2022 state championship. Huskies, of course, defended that title earlier this spring, and a double dribble is the call on Franklin. Franklin, a redshirt freshman. We'll see how she handles the senior Hannah Giddy inside. Great matchup within the game. Giles holding between the circles, gives left elbow extended to Giddy. Back up top, Giles. Back to Giddy. Giddy faces up, looks for a cutter, none there. Picks up her dribble, 13 on the shot clock. Monahan has it, top of the key. Monahan at the foul line, baseline to Giddy. Jab steps a couple times, kicks it out to Giles. Giles pulls back from the left elbow. Too strong. And the miss to Reese Webb, Fort Gibson High School native. Here's Topping, left elbow, left hand shot, no good. Giddy the rebound, that missed everything badly. Minute gone by, scoreless. Between the Lions and the Crimson Storm, Reether hands to Monahan. Monahan nearly got away with a carry. And that one is kicked by Jones, trying to get it to Hannah Giddy. SNU has started slow offensively the past two games. Tremendous second halves in wins over Arkansas, Fort Smith, and UCO here on Saturday. The first half, a bit of a struggle over the past two. Let's see if SNU can get off to a better start. Monahan to the baseline, doubled, kicks it up top to Giles. Ten on the shot clock, Giles to the basket. Right hand layup, too strong. Giddy, the offensive rebound, sends it back out top. Reether with a shot fake, back to Giles. Giles drives, knocked away from her by Jones. She gets it back, skips it over in front of the southern bench. Monahan rise and fire for three, it rattles out. No good. Loose ball, and it's going to be Missouri Southern basketball. Delayed whistle there. The ball is just sitting in play. And then the official rolled it out of bounds off SNU. So a couple good looks at the basket there for the Crimson Storm. None have fallen thus far. 8.15 to go first quarter. Scoreless game between the Lions and the Storm. Jones has it against Monahan. Moves to the middle of the court at the foul circle. Behind the screen from Franklin. That's an offensive foul as Franklin threw out the left elbow on Monahan. First foul on Franklin and the first foul on the Lions. This is game number three of seven away from home to start the season for the Lions. Some of those of the neutral variety, but several of those true road games as well. Here's Giddy in the paint with the left hand, off the glass and good, and SNU strikes first with 7.45 to go in the first quarter. 2-0 Crimson Storm. Jones to the right block, reverses field after Giddy 
went away on the double team, and Jones scores the first bucket for the Lions. We're tied at two. Reether behind the back dribble on the right wing. Gives it to Giddy, extended right elbow. Giddy gives to Burton up top. Burton working on Webb, backing down. Shovels it over to Giddy, post to post passing, and a beautiful feed from Shannon Burton. And Giddy starts the game with two buckets, two for two from the field. Here's Topping, pulls up at the foul line. That one's short, it's an air ball, and that one goes harmlessly out of play. Hannah Giddy struggling from the field in the early going this season, 36.5%. She's been in double figures twice, double figure rebounds twice, and has put up nine assists twice as well thus far. A full stat sheet on Saturday against UCO, 12 points, eight boards, nine assists, five blocks for Hannah Giddy on six of 16 shooting. Here's Reether. Trying to post up Burton, right side of the paint. Burton backing down Webb, a little shimmy shake. Missed the shot with the left hand. Re long rebound comes out to Honeycutt. Across half court, Honeycutt drives around Reether to the block. Stops, fades, fires, and it crawls over the rim. Honeycutt got herself into a bit of trouble there, but able to throw that one in. We're tied at four. Here's Giles right corner for SNU. Up top to Burton. Back to Giddy, right elbow. Holding. Kicks it out to Burton. Burton drives past Webb all the way to the basket. Had it stripped off her leg and out of play. Turnover for the Crimson Storm. Brandy Hudson into the game for Missouri Southern. Senior transfer out of Lenore Ryan, native of Chicago. Had 17 points in the win over Henderson State. Topping had it nearly knocked away from her by Reether. Gets it back, drives into the paint, splits the double team, left it short. Giddy has the rebound. Reether pushing tempo up ahead to Burton. Burton drives to the left block, stops, gives it back to Giddy. Got away with a travel. Burton, little hop step on the stop. Here's Monahan right wing behind the screen from Giddy. Monahan hesitates, drives, and a foul coming up on the Lions. It's going on Chrislyn Jones, her first team second. With 5.46 to go first quarter, 4-4 four four our score at the Sawyer Center between two central region powers. Inbounds comes to Giddy at the foul circle. Giddy hands back to Reether. Reether guarded tightly by Topping. Behind the screen from Giddy. Reether kicks it to Burton. Right baseline, rises up, shot, bounces off the front iron and drops through for two. Shannon Burton. With a 15-foot jumper, her first bucket of the game, and SNU leads 6-4. to four. Jones behind the back dribble, lost it. Monahan went to the floor to get it. Giles has it. Up ahead to Reether with Honeycutt back. Giles goes in, and a foul on Honeycutt as Reether heading to the line for two free throws. Excellent hustle getting on the floor by Emily Monahan to create the turnover, the third of the first quarter for the Lions. Two free throw attempts for Lauren Reether. 64% at the line, really the lone blemish on the stat sheet through four games for Reether as that first one rattles out. SNU is a team, just 62.5% from the free throw line this season. A number on 18 free throw attempts per game. A number that must improve as the season goes along. Reether's second is short, but it hits the rim, the backboard, and bounces through. 7-4, Crimson Storm, halfway through the first quarter. Topping, right wing behind the screen from Webb. Topping to the left block, pivots into the paint, gets it outside, Hudson. Hudson into the paint, and she traveled. Hannah Giddy, an excellent job defensively sliding over to cut off the pivot, and that will take us to our first timeout on the court. 4.57 to go first quarter, 7-4, SNU with the lead. We'll take time and be back with more. This is SNU Basketball. My favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit.
And welcome back to the Sawyer Center. 7-4 Southern Nazarene leading Missouri Southern in the early going. Big non-conference tilt for both of these schools looking to get back to the NCAA tournament where they were a season ago up in Duluth together. Even shared the same hotel in the snowy northern U.S. Giddy backing down Hudson. Hudson flopped, and a flop warning is going to be issued to Hudson as Giddy puts it in off the backboard. Ronnie, Re Ronnie Russell telling the official that her elbow was up. But Hudson absolutely flopped on that one. Hannah Giddy, six points for the Crimson Storm, who lead this one nine to four. Topping, drives left. Cut off, now finds herself at the right elbow to Webb down low to Hudson. Hudson to the baseline, missed the shot with the left hand. Giddy another rebound, her fourth. 4.20 to go, first quarter, SNU leads nine to four. A substitution coming for the Lions. Next dead ball, Reether cut off, looking for help. Gives it to Giddy, Giddy pivots and she traveled. Couldn't quite get it away before her foot slipped out from underneath her. Substitution for the Lions is Hannah Berg, the junior transfer out of Iowa Western Community College. Just seven and a half games, minutes per game in the first two. Takes the place of Mia Topping. Here's Webb, finds herself open, left wing for three. It's short. Monahan the rebound, and she will push for SNU. Splits a double team, lost the dribble, and it's knocked out of her hands out of bounds. Looked like a fortunate break for SNU there. Didn't look like Chrislyn Jones touched that, but we'll take it. 3.52 to go first quarter, 9-4 to four SNU. Reethert's holding top of the key. Left wing to Monahan, guarded by Honeycutt. In the left corner, Abby Giles. Giles, down low to Giddy. Outside, Burton. Right wing for three. High arcing shot. It's an air ball. Giles, the offensive rebound. Tried to throw it off, but Berg had the deflection. Now Giles gets it down to Giddy. Four on the shot clock. Giddy gets it over to Burton. Burton forces it up. It's no good. That's a shot clock violation. A couple of good opportunities there for SNU, but couldn't take advantage of the turnover. 3.20 to go first quarter. 9-4 SNU. Berg, right wing, fires up a three-pointer. Off the back iron, no good. Hudson tracks down the long rebound for Missouri Southern. Here's Jones with it now, left wing. To the left elbow, cut off nicely. Down low to Hudson. Hudson spins to the baseline, puts it up and in as she got beneath Hannah Giddy. The quick spin there from Brandy Hudson, averaging 12 and a half points and four rebounds per game this season. Here's Giles, left corner for three for SNU. It's no good. Hudson gets the rebound. 9-6 SNU, Lions push. Honeycutt, left corner three. It's up and good, and we're tied at nine just like that. A quick 5-0 burst. For the Lions, back the other way come the Crimson Storm. Burton shuffles to Giddy at the GAC logo. Giddy backing down on Hudson. Gives it to Burton. 15-foot jumper on the way. Long. Webb has the miss. Burton and Giddy combined eight of SNU's 12 field goal attempts. Here's Berg, wide open three off the front iron. Giddy another rebound. Her fourth of the afternoon. I think that should be her fifth. We're tied at nine, though. Two minutes to go first quarter. Burton to Giddy. Just outside the foul circle, left side. Giddy backing down Hudson into the paint. Got around her with a left hand and put it in for two again. Eight points for Hannah Giddy. Berg over to Webb. Webb drives. Leaves it off for Honeycutt at the right block. She's bumped and fouled by Shannon Burton, so Honeycutt will go to the line for two free throws. It's the first foul on the Crimson Storm in the quarter and the first on Burton. <laughs> Substitutions both ways. Jenna Bay checks in for Burton. Ryan Franklin back in for the Lions. Jones, Hudson, and Webb check out. Franklin is in along with Junior Kennedy Roach, a native of Venita, Oklahoma. And number 21, Morgan Myers, Jr. out of Cunningham, Kansas. Honeycutt misses the first free throw. It's two of three this season. One of the 
returners from last year's squad averaged seven points and three rebounds a year ago. Second one on the way is good. So it's a one-point game, 11 to 10 with 145 to go in the first quarter. Giddy, left elbow extended. Holding, looking for help. Gives it left wing to Reether. Reether gives it back to Giddy on the dive. Reverse layup is good. And Hannah Giddy with double figures in the first quarter. And SNU leads 13 to 10. Berg at the foul circle. Looking for help. Still looking for help. Looking, looking. Finally gets it over to Myers. Myers, right wing, guarded by Monahan. 15 on the shot clock. Skip pass to Berg. Down low to Franklin. Left block. Franklin into the paint. Looked like she dragged her pivot foot. Blocked by Giddy anyway. Minute to go, first quarter. Reether across half court. Barks out the signals for the Crimson Storm. Reether picks up her dribble. Gives it to Monahan. Gets it back to Reether. Down low, Giddy left to the paint. Faces up on Franklin. By herself with 10. Giddy. Skip past Monahan, right corner three on the way. It's off the back iron. Jenna Bay battling for the rebound, and as she's called for the foul, she tussled with Hannah Berg going for the loose ball. First on Bay, second on the Crimson Storm. 40 seconds to go, first quarter, 13 to 10. Southern Nazarene with the lead. Berg across half court. Dives behind the screen by Franklin. Lost the dribble. Nearly double dribble as it got caught on her hip. Down low to Franklin. Franklin goes to the baseline. Blocked by Giddy. Bay with the rebound. SNU can hold for the final shot of the quarter, leading 13 to 10. Reether pounding the dribble on the SNU logo. Here's Monahan now. And she's called for the carry as she hesitated over the top of the key. Trent May doesn't like the call. Jones back in for the Lions as Berg checks out. Nine seconds to go in the first quarter. Roach gets it into Jones. Jones between the circles. Five seconds now. Crosses over behind Franklin. Jones driving to the basket. Blocked out of bounds by Giddy with point eight on the clock. I mean, the fourth, fourth block of the quarter that Giddy's been credited with. Point eight on the clock. This will be a catch and shoot situation. Mia Topping checking in for Honeycutt to be the inbounder. Watch the lob. It comes to Franklin. Franklin rejected by Giddy at the buzzer. What a quarter for Hannah Giddy. Ten points, five blocks, four rebounds for the Crimson Storm center. And SNU takes a 13-10 lead into the second quarter. We'll be back with the start of the second stanza after these messages. This is SNU Basketball. Renew is the University Counseling Center. We are located at 6710 Northwest 43rd Street, just north of the Webster Commons. Renew offers a variety of services, including individual counseling, couples counseling, and psychoeducational workshops. The first five sessions for students are free, and students will never pay more than $10 per session. Faculty counseling is just $40 per session. Renew is open Monday through Thursday from 9 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Fridays from 11 a.m. until 6 p.m. For more information, visit renew.snu.edu or email renew at mail.snu.edu. Welcome back to Bethany, 13 to 10, Southern Nazarene with the lead over Missouri Southern State. SNU held the Lions to 27% shooting in the first quarter. A lot of that because of the presence of Hannah Giddy in the middle, five blocks in the first quarter for Hannah Giddy, along with 10 points and four rebounds. Lauren Reether dumps it down to Giddy, working on Franklin. Franklin, working hard. 
against Giddy. Outside to Reether. Reether. Driving to the basket. Got around me and topping. Oh, what a scoop layup there from Lauren Reether. Her first official shot attempt of the afternoon. She's got three, and the lead is five for the Crimson Storm. Topping to the foul line. Now backing down Reether. Shuffles to Franklin. Franklin backing down Giddy. Puts it up with the left hand. Too strong. Giddy another rebound. Reether across half court. Hands to Giles, left wing. Up top, Monahan. Monahan gives to Giddy. Giddy fires it down low to Jenna Bay. Went off her hands, but she corrals it. She kicks it back outside to Monahan with 12 on the shot clock. Monahan at the foul line, fades. Air ball. Lauren Reether, the offensive rebound with five on the shot clock. Reether lost it. Monahan found it, laid it up, goes off no good. Franklin clears for the Lions. Here's Topping, dashing into the front court. Stops, pulls up, too strong off the glass. Giddy tipped it, couldn't reach it, and it goes to Roach. Outside, Myers, three-pointer, no good. Roach all alone on the back side. Another offensive rebound for the Lions. Here's Jones, stepped on the sideline, turnover. So a frantic couple moments there for the Crimson Storm but it ends up with the Lions' fifth turnover of the half. 8.30 to go first half, 15 to 10. Southern Nazarene with the lead. Reether dumps it left of the paint to Giddy once again. Giddy gets to that left hand, too strong that time. Over Franklin, Topping has the rebound, Topping. Right down Main Street, drives the left side of the paint, blocked again by Giddy. It goes out of bounds, no, it hadn't hit out of bounds yet. Topping picked it up, standing out of bounds, and it's SNU basketball. And now the official saying, my, my bad, it was in fact already out of bounds. It's Missouri Southern basketball. And now we have a little bit of a conference here. just to check the shot clock, 21 on the shot clock. Lions basketball, Lob looking for Franklin, it was wide of her, but it comes to Myers. Myers hesitates, Jais, leaves it back for Franklin. Her shot from just inside the foul line rattles out. Giddy another rebound, her sixth. Here's Reether into the front court. Finds herself wide open, left wing, fires up a three, off the iron, no good, and Jones clears it for the Lions. Here's Roach on the break, missed the layup. Franklin, the offensive rebound, and it bounces in. Franklin with her first bucket in five attempts. 15 to 12 SNU, 7.35 to go second quarter. Giddy extended right elbow. Leaves it for Reether. Reether guarded tightly by Topping. Topping deflects it. Reether. Recovers, lobs, tried to get it over Franklin. The 6'3 center said no way, and a steal for Myers. Myers bounces it over to Franklin. Stops, pops outside the paint. Good from the left side. Back-to-back -back buckets for Ryan Franklin, and a timeout called by Trent May. As SNU offense bogging down a little bit here in the second quarter. 7.09 to go in the second quarter. 15-14 to 14, Crimson Storm with the lead. We'll keep it here through the break in SNU taking on Lubbock Christian on Saturday, 1 o'clock tip time for the Crimson Storm and the Chaparrals. Then at 3 o'clock, the SNU men back home after a trip to Lubbock Christian last Saturday, an 84-69 loss. They'll take on Arkansas Fort Smith in the second half of the doubleheader. That will tip off at 3 o'clock or just right after the women's game. Quick check over in Arkadelphia. Pittsburgh State dominating in the second half after leading by four at halftime, 47 to 43. They now lead this one 87-64 over Henderson State. As the shooting has dried up considerably for the Reddies in the second half. Henderson State shooting just 21% in the second half thus far after a strong first half showing. 
So that looks like that'll be a loss for the Reddies and a tough one for the GAC as a whole to take here in the early part of the season. Here, it's 15 to 14, Southern Nazarene with the lead. They've led since the opening tip against the Lions, led by as many as five. Shannon Burton is in for Hannah Giddy, giving Giddy her first breather of the afternoon. Let's see what the offense is able to do with Giddy on the bench. Giles, left wing, penetrates into the lane, gives it out to Burton, 10-foot jumper is good. Beautiful drive and dish from Abby Giles. And Shannon Burton, a couple of baseline jumpers, gives her four points this afternoon. Topping, gives to Jones, goes off of Topping, out of play. Topping might have been bumped. Trying to receive the pass, but either way, it's a turnover for the Lions. They're sixth of the first half. SNU sitting on four themselves. Here's Burton. Extended left elbow. Burton just 5-7, playing the five right now. Up top, Jenna Bay. Open for three. Off to the left, no good. Topping the rebound for the Lions. 6.20 to go, first half. Here's Roach. To the foul line, kicks it out to Myers. Nearly stepped on the sideline. Drive, shovels it over in the middle to Franklin. Loose ball. C Roach goes to the ground, and Giles has the steal. Up ahead to Bay. Four on one for the Crimson Storm. Bay takes it in herself, bumped and fouled by Jones. And that will be foul number two on Chrislyn Jones. She'll have to take a seat. Honeycutt checks back in for her. Wild couple moments there on the SNU defensive end. Two bumps go uncalled, one on one each way. And SNU ends up with two free throws from the sophomore Jenna Bay. Bay hits the first free throw, averaging five points and three and a half rebounds per game so far this season in what is effectively her freshman campaign. Missed all of last year with a Torn labrum in her shoulder. So Bay goes two for two and the lead back up to five. SNU hasn't been able to push it higher than that. Topping, holding right wing as Giles nearly had the steal. Topping leaves it back right elbow for Franklin. Franklin into the paint. Reether ripped it away from her. A steal for SNU. Reether lobs it ahead to Monahan. Honeycutt knocks it away from Monahan out of bounds. 5.46 to go in the second quarter. SNU basketball. Giles checks out for the first time. Hannah Giddy back in. Berg back in for topping for the Lions. And Webb comes back in for Kennedy Roach. Reether lobs it up top to Giddy. Now top of the key, Burton. And a foul. Coming up on Honeycutt as Monahan tried to move across the paint and found her way obstructed by the junior from Danville, Arkansas. Second on Honeycutt now and the second on the Lions in the quarter. Bay inbounds to Monahan in the corner who nearly lost her footing after receiving a bump from Honeycutt. Giddy outside to Reether left wing. Reether behind the screen of Giddy holding at the foul circle looking for help. Shuffles to Monahan. Monahan fires it down to Giddy on the baseline. Seven on the shot clock. Giddy faces up, pulls from 16, no good. Rebound knocked out of Myers' hands, out of bounds by Jenna Bay. SNU just two of eight, 25% in the quarter. And that matches the Lions' two of eight, 25% in the quarter as well. Berg. Behind the screen from Franklin, top of the key, gives it to Webb. Webb, given space, she'll step inside, right elbow, still won't pull the trigger. Now gives it to Myers. Myers, back outside Webb. She'll pull the trigger this time on a right wing three. It's short. Franklin swats the rebound, out of bounds, SNU basketball. It's Ronnie Russell giving his... Junior transfer, pep talk there. Webb hesitated twice, then finally pulled the trigger and missed her second three of the game. Giddy, top of the foul circle. Dumps it down low to Burton, backing down on Webb. Burton hesitates, puts it up, off the glass too strong. Franklin up high for the rebound, lobs it up ahead to Honeycutt. Two on two break. Honeycutt drives, 
Throws it up, looking for a foul. It's no good. Reether couldn't secure the rebound. It goes out of bounds off her. It'll stay with Missouri Southern with 24 on the shot clock. Burton checks out. Honeycutt checks out. Mia topping back in along with Abby Giles for SNU. So Monahan and Reeth are yet to take a breather. Feels like a game in March right now. Topping across the paint. Threw it up over Reeth. It looked like she threw it up with two hands backwards. Somehow got it to fall. Topping's first bucket of the game. The lead back down to three, 19 to 16. Giddy up top to Giles. Giles diving to the basket. Over three defenders, no good. Giddy the offensive rebound and a foul on Mia Topping. Her first third team foul on the Lions. Jillian Crawford checking in for Lauren Reether to give her her first break. The freshman out of Piedmont getting some early run. Hudson checks back in for the Lions. Franklin takes a seat. So some early run here for the freshman from Piedmont, Jillian Crawford. Giles, top of the foul circle, gives to Bay. Down low, Giddy, working on Hudson. Got around her with the right hand and lays it in off the glass. Couple of bumps from Giddy, created the space. She spun to the baseline and put it in. And the lead back to five. Here's Topping, drives to the right block, gives it over to Hudson. Oh, what a pass from Topping, a no-look dish. And Brandy Hudson with her second bucket of the game. 3.45 to go first half, 21-18, Southern Nazarene. Here's Bay between the circles to Giddy, left elbow. Looking for a cutter. It's not there. The Lions have done a great job guarding that back cut all afternoon. Here's Giddy. Gives it to Crawford. Crawford to the block and an offensive foul on Jillian Crawford as Mia Topping stepped over to draw the charge. First foul on Crawford, first on the Crimson Storm in the second quarter. Hannah Duncan into the game for the first time as Jenna Bay takes a seat. Hannah Duncan, the sophomore out of Perth, Australia, averaging four points so far this season per game. Did not play on Saturday against UCO, but has made a three-pointer in every game that she has played in thus far. Here's Topping. Got around Monahan, shovels it over to Webb on the right block, puts it up, fouled, scores. And the Lions, a free throw away from tying the ball game. Foul is on Abby Giles. Her first personal foul and the second team foul on the Crimson Storm in the quarter. So Reese Webb, three for four at the foul line so far this season, looking to tie it up with 3.11 to go. She missed the free throw. Duncan tracks down the long rebound for SNU. Monahan running the point right now with Reether on the bench for the Crimson Storm. Duncan up top to Crawford and a bump and a foul by Myers. Up top, a little too aggressive on the closeout. That's the fourth team foul on the line, so the next one will send SNU to the free throw line, first on Myers. Jones and Honeycutt each on the bench with two fouls for the Lions. Giddy holding top of the key after the inbounds. Gives to Duncan, left wing. Duncan holding. Tried to get it over to... Giles but lost her grip on it as Giles was covered and a steal by Myers and a foul on Hannah Duncan trying to recover the ball. Lauren Reether back in with 2.48 to go. First half, Monahan takes her first break of the afternoon. Tight contest between two really good teams. Who quite likely... We'll see each other again in March if everything goes according to plan. Topping. Tried to go baseline on the back door. Cut to Webb. Kicked out of bounds by Giles. Lions basketball on the baseline with a fresh 20 on the clock. 2.39 to go first half. Topping to Hudson. Left elbow. Hudson. Baseball pass out to Myers right wing. Myers to the foul line to Webb. Down low to Hudson, reaching foul on Hannah Giddy. 
Reached through the back of Hudson just a little bit too much. First foul on Hannah. The fourth on the Crimson Storm. So both teams in the bonus the rest of the way with the next foul. 2.30 to go first half, 21-20 SNU. Inbounds comes to Webb, right baseline. Backing down Giles, pivots into the paint, forces it up with the left hand, no good. And an over-the-back foul on the rebound on Reese Webb. I think it's going to be Abby Giles who will head to the free throw line for the Crimson Storm. First foul on Webb. She checks out. Kennedy Roach back in for the Lions. And Giles heading to the free throw line. Giles four for seven from the foul line this season. Has not scored today. 0 for four from the field. Transfer from Henderson State. Averaged... 12 points and six rebounds last year for the Reddies. But she's a native of Searcy and started her career at Harding. Was there for one year, then went over to Arkadelphia. In and out on the second free throw. Hudson has the miss. SNU leads by two, 22 to 20. Crawford working against Berg up top. And a bump and a foul is called on Crawford. It's Crawford's second foul and it sends Berg to the line for two free throws on the bonus. Didn't look like much there. Berg's first free throw rattles in. Her first free throws as a lion. Second one from Berg is perfect. Monahan checks in. Freshman Crawford will take a seat. So we're tied up. 22 apiece. 210 to go. First half. Reether gives it to Duncan. Right elbow. Gives it to the cutting giddy. And her layup too strong. Rebounded by Hudson. Good look, good cut. Hudson, top of the key. Thought about the three, instead needs help. Working on Giddy. Gets around her, missed the shot. Loose ball, Monahan has it, and she'll push. Myers tried to tap it away. Monahan kicks it out to Duncan. Over to Reether, right wing. Good ball movement by the Crimson Storm. Good recovery by the Lions on the fast break. Giddy holding right elbow. Got it down low to Reether on the block. Got around Myers, stops, forced it up, blocked by Myers. And a jump ball is the call, and it goes back to the Lions on the possession arrow. Jenna Bay checking back in for Hannah Duncan. Hudson checks out for the Lions and as Franklin checks back in. 90 seconds to go, first half, 22 apiece. Here's Mia topping into the front court. Guarded by Reether. Topping, drives right to the block, runs over Genebe. Offensive foul on Mia Topping. Her second personal foul. A nice job by Genebe stepping over to take the charge. So SNU back in possession just like that. Reether across half court. Is to Giles, right elbow. Giles dumps it down low to Giddy. Giddy around Franklin with the left hand. Hit bounces in just over the outstretched arms of the redshirt freshman. And Hannah Giddy having a game so far, 14 points. Franklin down low. Her left hand hook to answer is good. We're tied again at 24, 50 seconds to go in the first half. Bay. Outside Monahan, top of the key to Giddy, right elbow. Monahan cuts, doesn't get the pass. Now Giddy finds the open lane, pivots to the left hand. She put it in again. <laughs> Hannah Giddy giving the red shirt freshman a lesson in post offense this afternoon. SNU back up, one second difference game to shot clock. Topping, told for the double dribble as she. The dribble got away from her, a turnover for the Lions, their 10th 
of the first half. And SNU can have the final shot with 19.6 seconds left in the second quarter. 26-24, SNU hasn't been pretty, but it's been two great defensive showings really thus far. Giles, right elbow with eight. Holding, pivoting, down low to Giddy. Giddy across the paint, fades with a right hand. It's no good. Bay, the offensive rebound, has to try to get it up, and it does not come in time. And I think they're going to look at it to see if there was a jump ball called before the clock expired. It was going to be close. The possession arrow favors SNU right now. The officials huddle to discuss it before they go to the monitor. The review before the review, if you will. Now they'll go to the monitor to take a peek to see if there was any time left on the clock. When the jump ball was called. Regardless, SNU is going to take a lead into the locker room. The question being, how big will this lead be? SNU has led for the duration of the first half. Just by five, though, at most. As neither team able to generate the necessary offense so far this afternoon. Both teams under 40% in the quarter. This a new 5 of 15, the Lions 6 of 16. But it's been a game that we anticipated maybe a little bit less easy on the eyes on the offensive end, but it has been a game where you can see how good both these teams are and why they are both looking to get back to the NCAA Central Region Tournament. And they rule the jump ball came after the final buzzer. Ronnie Russell doesn't like the call because that means the possession arrow will favor SNU to start the third quarter. But that is how we come to the end of the first half. 26 to 24, Southern Nazarene with the lead over Missouri Southern State here in Bethany. We'll take an extended break, come back with the start of the third quarter after we wrap things up on the first half stats and break it all down for you. This is SNU Basketball.
And welcome back to halftime at the Sawyer Center. Southern Nazarene leads Missouri Southern State 26 to 24. Not the most aesthetically pleasing offensive game in the first half between these two powerful teams in the central region, but a good first half between two really good teams that again will probably look to see each other again in March. Luke McConnell back at the Sawyer Center with you. Going through the first half numbers, SNU just 36.5% from the field in the first half. 0 for 6 from three-point range and 4 of 6 from the free throw line. The Lions not any better. 32% from the field, 1 of 6 from 3 and 3 of 5 from the free throw line. The Lions a slight edge on the glass, 22 to 19, 7 to 5 in the offensive rebounding category, leading to a 6 to 2 edge in second chance points. The Lions did have 10 turnovers in the first half, leading to 9 SNU points. SNU 7 turnovers in the first half, leading to 6 Missouri Southern points. SNU 4 to 2 on the fast break and 18 to 16 in the paint led by Hannah Giddies, 16 points, 7 rebounds and 7 blocks. And I think she was shorted a rebound or two in that first half as well. Just a dominating first half for the senior post for the Crimson Storm. Shannon Burton with four points. Abby Giles, one point. Lauren Reether, three points. And Jenna Bay, two points. Just three made field goals outside of Hannah Giddy's eight of 12 shooting in the first half for the Crimson Storm. Lauren Reether leading the way with three assists. And Emily Monahan, Abby Giles, and Lauren Reether each with a steal. For the Lions, Caitlin Honeycutt and Ryan Franklin each with six points apiece. Brandy Hudson with four points. And Hanneberg, Nia Topping, Reese Webb, and Chrislyn Jones with two points apiece. Topping, Jones, and Honeycutt each have two personal fouls. Jillian Crawford has two for SNU, the only player in any semblance of foul trouble for the Crimson Storm. Topping and Hudson each with four rebounds for the Lions. Two assists, four topping, and two steals for Morgan Myers. That rounds out the first half stats between the Crimson Storm and the Lions. Final score over in Arkadelphia earlier this afternoon, 95-72. to Pittsburgh State gets the Arkadelphia sweep over Washita Baptist and Henderson State, who they defeated today. The Reddies shot just 26% in the second half after trailing by just four at halftime. Should be a fun second half in Bethany. Certainly promises to be a tight second half. Regardless, SNU basketball out of the break. Starters back on the court for both schools. Giles, Monahan, Giddy, Reether, and Burton for SNU. Webb, Jones, Franklin, Honeycutt, and Topping for the Lions. Giddy holding up top, looking for the back cut to Reether. It's not there. Gives it up to Giles, top of the key. She'll fire a three-pointer, and it's well off the mark. No good. Rebound comes out to Lauren Reether. Shot clock incidentally reset. It did not hit the rim. It should be at 14. That's what they get back on the clock. SNU basketball in front of their own bench. Inbounds comes to Reether to Giddy, top of the key. Giddy holding and observing outside Burton at the right wing. Eight on the clock to Giles, right corner. Trying to get it to Giddy instead to Burton. Burton forces it up, blocked by Franklin, goes out of bounds. Shot clock violation. So SNU starts the second half with a turnover. And the Lions can take their first lead of the afternoon with a three-pointer. Topping. Gives it to Franklin. Right of the paint. Franklin backing down. Forces it up with the left hand over Giddy. Off the back iron. No good. Burton has the rebound for the Crimson Storm. She'll hand to Reether in the front court. Here's Giddy holding right, or excuse me, left wing outside the three-point line. Now here's Reether. SNU got the switch they wanted, but they can't get it to her. SNU unable to take advantage. Now Reether finds herself wide open, left wing, and she drains the three. SNU couldn't take advantage of the switch. Topping was on Giddy, but a three-pointer from Lauren Reether will work just fine as SNU finally cracks the code from deep. 
and leads 29-24. Jones trying to answer. That's short. Burton, another rebound. She'll hand to Giles, and Giles will push. Bounce pass ahead to Monahan. It was a little slow. It came back to Giles. She forced it up, and she was fouled. That's on Jones. That's number three on Chrislyn Jones, who has been a non-factor today. Morgan Myers checks back in for her. Jones, the team's leading returning scorer at 10.5 points per game, averaging 18 through the first two games this season but has not gotten anything going today as Giles hits the first free throw. And SNU now has their biggest lead of the afternoon at six. One more for the Henderson State transfer. She knocks it down. So Giles goes two for two at the line. She's three for four there with three points. And SNU leads by seven, 31 to 24. Topping. Gives it to Franklin at the foul circle. Backs down Giddy, goes to the floor, travels. Looked like she might have twisted her ankle a little bit. Franklin not shy going at the senior Giddy. Franklin comes out. Brandy Hudson checks in. So Jones and Franklin heading to the bench. Less than two minutes into the second half. Monahan and Reether fumble the exchange and now a tie up and a turnover for the Crimson Storm. It looked like it was Honeycutt who got a hand in on the handoff. Webb trying to get it into Topping. Topping is it. Gets it across half court. 31 24 SNU. 5 0 start to the second half for the Crimson Storm. Now Reether picks Topping's pocket. Reether by herself. Spins away from Topping, lost the ball. It's still loose on the floor. And that goes out of bounds off of Topping as SNU made up for the nearly lost possession by keeping it on this end. 23 on the shot clock as Missouri Southern never had possession there. Reether triggering it in. Bounces it into Monahan with Honeycutt on her back. Monahan puts it in for two. Not sure what Honeycutt's complaining about going down the floor. Hudson, right of the paint. Faces up on Giddy, forced it up through contact, no good. Burton, the rebound. Here comes Giles. Giles, down Main Street, off the glass, no good, but a foul. Fouls on Honeycutt, that's three on Caitlin Honeycutt, and the Crimson Storm have come roaring out of the locker room with a 7-0 burst. It's a 9-0 burst going back to the end of the first half. Honeycutt coming out of the game. Sophomore Maggie Saki. This transfer from Oral Roberts into the game for the first time today. Native of Red Oak, Oklahoma. She went to Crowder High School down in southeast Oklahoma. Down near McAllister. Played just eight minutes against Henderson State. The only appearance she's had this season. but Scored ten points in those eight minutes. Giles goes two for two. She's got four free throws in the first two and a half minutes, and SNU has opened up an 11-point lead with a 9-0 start to the quarter. Topping. Hounded by Reether up top behind the back dribble. Stops right of the paint. Look down low for Webb. Off her shin. SNU with the turnover. Reether into the front court. Inside out dribble. Finds a free path to the basket. Left hand layup. Good. Timeout, Lions. And the Crimson Storm, a 13-0 run going back to the end of the first half. It's 37-24. We'll take time as well. Seven minutes to go, third quarter. We'll be back with more. This is SNU Basketball. One of my favorite things about SNU was the relationships I was able to have with people, with professors, with friends. One thing that was purposely different about SNU was the integration of faith into the academics. I feel like I learned so much from that that helped prepare me for life after college, to be a husband and someday to be a father. It was a really, really transformational time in my life. My degree could have come from anywhere, but my relationships with people, I know I would not have gotten anywhere else. Go to snu.edu to apply or to schedule a visit.
The Crimson Storm have opened up a 13-point lead three minutes into the third quarter. Three of four from the field, four of four from the free throw line. The run going back to the end of the first half is 13-0. Covers just over or just under four minutes. And the Lions left looking for answers as the onslaught for the Crimson Storm pours on. Hannah Berg into the game out of the timeout. So it's Berg, Saki, Hudson, Roach, and Myers into the game. And Maggie Saki, the transfer from Oral Roberts quickly with her first bucket of the game. Giddy picks up her dribble, looks for help, gives it to Monahan, left wing. Monahan into the paint, fakes the pass, drives in, and a foul on the drive going on Saki. It's her first third team foul on the Lions in the quarter, 6.36 to go in the third quarter, 37-26. Southern Nazarene, Reether triggering in for the Crimson Storm. Reether lobs it all the way up top to Giles. Giles grabbed by Myers, no call. Giles tried to get it over to Giddy. It bounced off a foot of Missouri Southern. Came back to Giles, Giles missed it. Hannah Berg has it. Berg to the foul line. Down low, Hudson. Hudson, skip it out to Roach. Three-pointer on the way, it's an air ball. Loose ball comes to Monahan. Monahan across the timeline for SNU. To Giddy at the right elbow. Giddy looks for the cut. Finally has it to Reether. She got free of Berg and laid it in for two. SNU's been waiting on that all afternoon, and it finally came through with Giddy's first assist of the afternoon. Saki in the mid-range to Hudson. Hudson right into the body of Giddy, and Giddy. Reached down for the block, might have caught a bit of the arm, and that's what the call is. Trent May can't believe it. It's the second foul on Hannah Giddy. Two fouls on Hannah Giddy with 5.47 to go. Hudson's first free throw up and good. 92% at the line this season is Hudson through two games. She goes two for two, leaving her now 13 of 14. Lauren Reether right back at the defense as she sprints down the court and lays it in for two. Lauren Reether quickly with 12 points. And now Reether and an offensive foul on Hudson on the illegal screen. Sent Reether caroming into the back of the Lions defend offensive player. First foul on Hudson, fourth foul on the Lions. Here's Giles for SNU up top. Giddy, left of the paint, got around Hudson, gives it to Burton, block to block. Burton forced it up, no good, loose ball. Roach has it for the Lions. Berg, extended right wing, up top, holding, now gives to Hudson. Hudson spins, forced it under Giddy somehow, and she puts it in for two. Hudson, eight points, four rebounds, long lead pass for Monahan. Monahan with a dribble, reverse layup, looks like she got her arm hit, missed the shot, got it back. Up top to Reether with 20 on the shot clock. Giddy to Giles, baseline. Finds the cutting Burton, lays it off the glass, too strong. Lost the ball, out of bounds. It will be SNU basketball. Timeout on the court, 4.37 to go in the third quarter. SNU leads by 11, 41 to 30. It will be Crimson Storm ball out of the timeout when we come back. This is SNU basketball. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days I like to talk about refining character. I think that uh, we're all in process and 
in those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Welcome back to Bethany, 41 to 30. Southern Nazarene with the lead over Missouri Southern. Luke McConnell here with you at the Sawyer Center. Crimson Storm, 15 to six to start the third quarter. Reether lobs it to Giddy at the three point line on the inbounds, Reether has it. Looking to post up Burton, Burton backing down Roach. Fires it up, missed the shot, but she was fouled. Burton, the transfer from Dawson Community College, just 5'7", but she, as Trent May described her as a bulldog inside. Working on the outside shot that will be a threat later in the season for certain. She's hit a couple of baseline jumpers this afternoon on her four points. Nine shots this afternoon, not afraid to shoot it. First free throw up and good. Shooting 83% at the free throw line this season in her Force inside, a good thing to have in the absence of Georgia Adams in the early part of the season. Burton goes two for two. Lead back to 13, 43 to 30. Berg into the front court, gives to Roach. Roach drives to the baseline, forced it up. She was fouled by Burton. And Roach going to the line to answer the two free throws. Roach, the junior out of Venita, Oklahoma, transferred in from Coffeyville Community College just across the border there in Kansas. Averaged nearly 10 points and six rebounds per game last year at Coffeyville. First free throw up and in for Roach. Getting a lot of Oklahoma flavor on this roster. Five Oklahomans on the roster for Missouri Southern. Roach goes two for two. Jenna Bay checks in for Southern Nazarene. Burton checks out with her second personal foul. Lions over the limit with five. SNU just two in the third quarter. 43-32, 4.15 to go third quarter. Giddy holding right elbow. Let's the traffic clear. Backing down Hudson. Back cut to Abby Giles. Lost it out of bounds. Knocked out of her hands by Meyer. SNU maintains possession with 17 on the shot clock. Giles inbounding right baseline. Looking, looking. Fires it too high of Giddy. Not far enough for Reether. It's intercepted by Berg. Tenth turnover of the game for SNU. Here's Saki. At the foul line, picks up her dribble, left wing Berg. Berg has space, fires a three, short. Giles comes in for the rebound for SNU. Fourth rebound of the game for Abby Giles. Has not hit a field goal yet today, but does have five points from the free throw line. Giddy at the foul circle, hands to Bay. Bay picks up her dribble, knocked out of her hands by Saki, but Reether recovers, 10 on the shot clock. Reether behind the Giddy pick, hesitates, drives past Hudson to the basket, left-hand layup was short. Giddy, the offensive rebound, missed it. Battling down low, it goes off of Missouri Southern. It will stay with SNU with 18 on the shot clock. Pretty hesitation move by Reether, couldn't get enough on the left-handed layup. Reether inbounds to Monahan, bumped off the glass. It does not fall. The physics of that one not falling. Surprising. Foul is on Roach, her second. And Emily Monahan at the line for two free throws. 19 free throw attempts the last two games. These are her first of the afternoon. First one's up and good. One more for the senior from Melbourne. And she knocks it down. 
Lead back to 13, 45-32. Berg across the timeline. Heads left behind the screen from Hudson. Now re-screens. Drives right of the paint. Forced it up over Giddy. Off the glass and good. A nice hanging shot from Hannah Berg. Her first field goal of the afternoon. The lead's back to 11 for SNU with three minutes to go. Giles between the rings to Giddy. Hudson gambled. Giddy kicks it out. Right corner, Reether wide open three. In and out. Good look from Reether. Hudson clears for the Lions. Lions can get it back under double digits for the first time in a while. Berg drives to the right block, forces it off the glass over Reether. No good. Giddy the rebound. She bounces it over to Reether. Long lead pass. Right on the money to Monahan. What a dime from Reether. And Monahan pays it off with an assist. Berg, entry pass to Hudson, and she's bumped from behind by Giddy on the entry pass. That's foul number three on Hannah Giddy with 2.16 to go in the third quarter. SNU leading 47 34, and Trent May is going to pull her out of the game and get Shannon Burton back in. Burton also with two personal fouls. SNU not particularly deep, rolling about eight deep right now. Thanks to that injury to Georgia Adams. Inbounds pass comes to Roach, right wing. Tried to skip it over to Berg. Intercepted by Monahan. Another turnover for the Lions. Monahan hesitates at the foul line. Back outside, Reether. Reether holding. Is to Burton. Left elbow. Back to Reether. Left wing in front of the bench. Pocket pass. And Hudson got her hand in the passing lane and stole it. Hudson lost the dribble. Burton to the floor for it. Hudson picked it up. Berg. Outside, Myers, open right wing three, is no good. Giles, the rebound for SNU. Got away from a couple Lion defenders. Three on two break. Giles has the C's part. She takes it straight to the basket, and she's fouled by Hudson, her second personal foul. And Abby Giles going back to the free throw line once again. Hudson checking out. Ryan Franklin back in. 139 to go third quarter, 47 34, Southern Nazarene with the lead. SNU has outscored the Lions by 11 in the third quarter. Started with an 11-0 run to start the period in the first three minutes. Giles' first free throw is short. One more for the senior transfer. First miss of the quarter after eight straight makes from the foul line for Southern Nazarene. Second one up and good. So Giles with six points, five rebounds now. The biggest lead of the afternoon for SNU is the present 48-34 score. Topping is, as, excuse me, Saki is run over by Giles. Trying to get through the screen. Second foul on Giles. That's the fourth foul on SNU. 132 to go third quarter, so... The Lions still not in the bonus. Saki looking, looking. Gets it into Roach. Roach has it right wing. A foul on Monahan, trailing Myers. I mean, the first foul on Emily Monahan, but more importantly for Missouri Southern, it puts them at the free throw line. Morgan Myers. Heading to the line for her first free throws as a Lion. Transfer in from Barton Community County Community College. She averaged 12 points per game there. Not sure what we're checking over at the scorer's table. I think we have a little bit of blood on the jersey of Emily Monahan. The trainer, Travis Veach, taking care of that with his handy spray and cloth over there on the SNU bench. And we're good to go. Myers Jr. out of Cunningham, Kansas, misses the first free throw. Lions lost six of their top nine scores from last year. And four seniors and 
two transfers. Haley Grant transferred down the road to Southwestern Oklahoma State as Myers made the second free throw. Rather quickly into the front court. And Lacey Stokes, the leading scorer of the team, transferred over to Missouri State, moving up a level. Burton at the foul circle with 15 on the shot clock to Monahan down low. Backing down Roach, pivots into the paint, off the glass and good. Some nice post moves from Emily Monahan. I bet she picked those up from her fellow Aussie. Down low, Franklin. Franklin with a significant height advantage, but left the left-hand shot short over Burton. Good defense there by Burton. Under a minute to go. First half, 50 to 35. SNU with the lead. Burton, top of the key to Reether. Reether, galloping through, lost the ball. Roach. Long lead pass ahead for Myers. Myers puts it up off the glass and good. And now Topping shoots the passing lane, and she goes in for an uncontested layup. Trent May is incensed right now as Lauren Reether got trucked by Topping on the steal. Reether slow to get up. Like she was grabbing at her left ankle. Taking a minute to catch her breath. So a couple of fast break layups for the Lions. Trim the lead down to 11. Shot clock is off as SNU moves into the front court. 12 seconds. Reether behind the screen from Burton. Hesitates, drives, and a foul. On the drive. Giving it to Mia Topping. That's Topping's third personal foul. Lauren Reether at the line, four, two free throws with seven seconds to go in the quarter. Reether, 12 points, five assists, three steals this afternoon. First free throw up and tickles the twine. SNU, 10 of 11 from the foul line in the third quarter. Make it 11 for 12. Seven seconds to go, 13 point lead for SNU. Topping. Cross half court, drives to the left side of the paint, dribbled it off her foot, forces up a long two at the buzzer. It's no good. And SNU extends a two-point halftime lead by 11 in the third quarter and takes a 52-39 lead into the final stanza. We'll be back with the last 10 minutes of this one. This is SNU Basketball. SNU sets the standard for innovative servant leadership. Students from every discipline are exposed to leadership opportunities where they can thrive. In more than 45 majors, students experience true integration of faith and learning, rising to be leaders in their field. SNU is the place for educators to take the next step and earn a master's or doctorate in education and leadership with over 400 ed leadership graduates serving across Oklahoma. If you're starting as a freshman or earning a master's or doctorate, SNU is the place for you. Ten minutes to play in Bethany Southern Nazarene with a 52-39 lead over Missouri Southern State. Luke McConnell with you at the Sawyer Center. Been a great game thus far. SNU, the big third quarter, 26 points in the third quarter, 11 of 12 from the free throw line. They're holding the Lions to just 33% shooting thus far. 
Back cut. Abby Giles on the catch and the layup. Beautiful pass from Lauren Reether, her sixth assist of the game. And SNU matches their largest lead of 15 at 54-39. Honeycutt and Franklin back in for the Lions. Franklin on the baseline. That's an air ball. Giddy might have gotten a piece of that. Reether. Left wing to Giles, wide open. Instead, she'll try to penetrate. Crystal and Jones also back out there for the Lions with Honeycutt. Both Hudson and Franklin out there together for the first time this afternoon for the Lions. The give and go with Giddy off the glass and good. Another assist for Reether and Giddy's first bucket of the second half. Berg, step back three from the right wing. No good. Franklin and Giddy battle for it. Giddy saved it off of Franklin out of bounds. Great hustle by Hannah Giddy, who has 18 points, nine rebounds, seven blocks. Franklin checks out. Mira Kahn, the senior out of Berlin, Germany, in the game for the first time this afternoon. A tough day for the redshirt freshman Franklin. Here's Jenna Bay, extended right elbow with Hudson guarding her. Trying to get it to Giddy, dumps it down to the right block. Giddy into the paint, pivots to the right shoulder, and a beautiful hook off the glass. Giddy with a 20 piece today. And Jenna Bay swats the lead pass out of bounds. SNU leading by 19. Timeout, Missouri Southern. And the Crimson Storm lead 58 to 39. We'll take time and be back with more basketball. This is SNU Basketball. Character, culture, and Christ have been the motto for Southern Nazarene University for many, many years. When I came as president, uh, I was really curious about those words and really curious to dig into the archives. In fact, a conversation on campus uh, one day with a visitor to our campus who asked that same question, what does character, culture, and Christ mean today? These days I like to talk about refining character. I think that we're all in process. and. In those collegiate years, those years of a university experience, there's a great opportunity to refine character. Welcome back to the Sawyer Center. SNU leading this one by 19, 58 to 39 over Missouri Southern. The second time Crimson Storm have faced a fellow Central Region Tournament foe from last season. The second time they have risen to the occasion, getting the 17 point win over Minnesota State Mankato in the season opener. Here's Jones for Missouri Southern. Grabs out to the right wing, picks up her dribble, hounded by Monahan, gets it up top to Kahn. Kahn down low, Hudson rejected by Giddy. Hudson got it back, forced it up, lost the ball going up. Reether, I think might have gotten a piece of it. Reether has it now. Reether to the foul circle, drives on Berg, puts it up off the glass, bounces off, no good. Kahn, the rebound for the Lions. Here comes Berg into the front court. Berg down the left side of the lane. Circles back out up top. Honeycut. Honeycut. And an offensive foul on Kahn. Did not get her feet set on the on the screen. An illegal screen set on Jenna Bay. 7.52 to play. First foul on Kahn. First on the Lions. Absolutely impressive what SNU has done thus far this season. Even more impressive doing it without their leading returning score in Georgia Adams. He's out with a hip injury. Return unknown. Jenna Bay, deep right corner three off the back iron. Giddy the offensive rebound. Back up top, Giles. SNU will run some clock. 15 on the shot clock. Bay on the back cut. Beautiful find from Hina Giddy in the left hand layup for Jenna Bay. 
60 to 39, Southern Nazarene. The Lions came in averaging 80 points in their first two games. Berg looking for Jones. And Emily Monahan called for the grab on Jones, telling the official she, Jones was grabbing her. Monahan checks out Carly Gassaway into the game for the first time. The sophomore out of Choctaw, Oklahoma, has appeared in two games thus far this season. Played nine minutes in the win last Saturday over UCO. Hudson to Honeycutt, deep left wing three, no good. And a foul down low on Lauren Reether is the call on the box out. She can't believe it. Just her first foul and the second on the Crimson Storm. Reether wondering what she needs to do there to box out Khan. Inbounds comes to Honeycutt, 12 foot jumper is good from Honeycutt. Honeycutt now with eight points today. Lions finally cross the 40-point mark. 6.50 to play, 60-41, to 41, Southern Nazarene. Giddy at the right elbow. Oh, missed Jenna Bay wide open underneath as she was looking back for Reether. Giddy gives it out to Bay. Left corner three. Missed the shot. Berg had the rebound ripped away from her by Reether. Reether thought it went off her leg, but it will stay with Missouri Southern. SNU 11 of 21 from the field in the second half. The Lions 6 of 19 in the second half. Foul. Coming up on SNU, it's going to be on Giles, her third. It's a third foul on the Crimson Storm. The Lions shoot 80% from the foul line this season. They don't want to give the Lions too much opportunity to come back in this one. Still a lot of time left. Con baseline jumper. It's an air ball over the rim. Reether clears it for the Crimson Storm. Reether holding between the circles. Gives it to Giddy right elbow, guarded by Hudson. Giddy will start the penetration at the foul line. Lost the ball. Honeycutt has it. Now Giles came in and ripped it away from her. Shot clock did not reset. Seven on the clock. And now the officials are going to talk about it. Honeycutt did have it. Depends on how you want to define possession. Honeycutt definitely had two hands on the ball and had made a slight move before Giles ripped it away from her. And they are going to reset the shot clock. So a break for SNU. So they rule Honeycutt did have possession when Giles... Took it away from her. Giles inbounds to Giddy. Guarded by Khan this time. Gives it to the cutting Giles. And Giles is hit hard by Honeycutt as Honeycutt reached in to try to steal the ball. Giles goes down hard. A little bit of a stare down of Honeycutt as she walks to the free throw line. Giles has lived at the free throw line today. Six of eight from the charity strike, make it seven of nine for the senior transfer from Henderson State. That was a Honeycutt's fourth foul, just two on the Lions in the quarter. Giles goes two for two, so now eight for 10 at the foul line, and she goes into double figures with 10 points and five rebounds. Berg guarded tightly by Reether, right wing, pass tipped away by Gassaway, and Gassaway been Working hard on the defensive end, growing in that area. She's a great shooter, but defense has been something that she's had to work hard on transitioning to the high school level. Honeycutt off the inbound, three-pointer, no good. Giddy secures the rebound, her 12th board. Double-double for Hannah Giddy. See if she can get two more blocks for the triple-double. Giddy holding extended left elbow outside Lauren Reether. Reether, give and go with Giddy. Off the glass, too strong. Hudson has the rebound, gets it out quickly to Berg. Berg, pounding right wing, now moves middle, drives down the left side of the paint, outside Honeycutt. Honeycutt with Gassaway on her. Hides behind the Hudson screen, fires up a three, no good. Giddy 
Had the rebound knocked out of her hands by Reether's head. Comes back to the Lions. Jones tries a three from straight away and knocks it down. First three-pointer of the game for Crystal and Jones. Just the second of the game as a team for the Lions with 4.55 to go. It's a 30-second timeout. The lead is 18 for SNU, 62 to 44. Three-point defense has been outstanding for the Crimson Storm this season. They're averaging, opponents are averaging just 19.5% from deep against SNU. The Lions are two for 15 today, 13% thus far. So SNU leads by 18, 62, 44. The Crimson Storm just one of 11 from three themselves. So a combined three of 26 from three-point range today. And Umi Atsuka into the game for the first time for SNU, the freshman out of Tokyo, Japan. Her fourth appearance of the season. First, certainly at this stage of a game. Here's Reether behind the screen from Giddy. Reether drives to the basket, left-hand layup is good as she got around Maggie Saki. Reether now at 16 points today. Here's Saki at the right elbow. Picks up her dribble, gets it out to Jones. Gassaway pokes it away from her. Jones retrieves with 19 on the shot clock. Jones to Kahn at the right block. Goes at Giddy, throws it over the rim, no good. Gassaway the rebound for the Storm. SNU leads by 20, 64-44. Reether across half court with 4.12 to play. Giddy holding, extended right elbow, gives it back to Reether. Reether behind the Giddy pick. Working on the right wing, 10 on the shot clock to Giddy at the foul line. Giddy looking for a cutter. Instead, she'll take it herself. Holding at the GAC logo. Gives to Bay into the paint, forced it up, and it rolls around. Hit in! And the foul! With two on the shot clock, Jenna Bay puts it in. The foul on Kennedy Roach. Her third, and Jenna Bay with six points heading to the line looking for number seven. Base free throw rattles in, and SNU continues to pour it on 67 to 44. The Crimson Storm outscoring the Lions by 20 in the second half. Atsuka hounding Saki. Now Jones behind the back dribble, pulls up at the left elbow. Oh, that's a pretty move from Chrislin Jones. Jones hampered with foul trouble today. He's played just 20 minutes. Just still high on the team with the rotation from Ronnie Russell. Giddy holding at the foul circle. Will take Khan to the block. Tried to skip it to Atsuka in the corner, but Atsuka was diving to the basket. Reether checks out, Jillian Crawford in. 3.17 to go, 67-46 SNU. Reether checks out, 16 points, five rebounds, seven assists, and four steals in 35 minutes. Here's Jones, left wing, given too much space, fires a three, it's no good. Con the rebound, and Gassaway is called for the foul. Thought she had the tie-up. Instead, she gets whistled for her first personal foul. Fourth team foul on the Crimson Storm with 3.05 to play. SNU leading by 21. Saki inbounds to Honeycutt. Honeycutt dives down the left side of the paint. Got underneath Giddy. Con the offensive rebound on the missed layup. Here's Jones. Pulls up from the right elbow. In and out. Crawford the rebound. Jones pestering her in the backcourt. Gives it up to Bay. Bay running the point for SNU right here. Crawford on the back cut. Missed the left-hand layup. Atsuka fighting hard for the rebound. Honeycutt comes up with it. And Gassaway with a steal in the backcourt. Gassaway, couple pump face, creates some space. Forced it up, missed the shot. And Saki with the rebound and a foul on SNU. They're going to give it to Atsuka. That's the fifth foul on the Crimson Storm. Genebae checks out. Hannah Duncan in. Hannah Giddy checks out. Anna Kakoli in for the first time today. 
SNU leading by 21, 67, 46. And now Ronnie Russell clears his bench a little bit. Malia Landers and Carolina Crawford into the game for the first time today. Saki misses the first free throw. One more coming for the sophomore out of Red Oak, Oklahoma. Second one is good. The lead is 20, 67-47. Atsuka runs the point for SNU with Crawford, Kakoli, Duncan, and Gassaway. Kakoli at the right elbow. Hands to Atsuka up top. Behind the Kakoli pick. Atsuka has it poked away from her. Loose ball on the deck. And Atsuka got it back. Outside Crawford. Sets her feet. Left wing three on the way. Skips over the rim. Kakoli couldn't corral the rebound. Carolina has it. Carolina up ahead to Roach. Roach into the paint. Back up top. Saki. Saki. Drives it is fouled by Gassaway. Closed down a little aggressively there. 159 to play. Second foul on Gassaway. And Saki back at the free throw line. Three points today for Maggie Saki. So next up for the Crimson Storm, a one o'clock game on Saturday with Lubbock Christian. Lubbock Christian. Two straight trips to the Sweet 16, and the year before that. A national championship. The year before that was COVID. The year before that, another national championship. Lubbock Christian has been the class of women's basketball in D2 for a while. Another stern test for SNU on Saturday. Gassaway, long two on the way. His perfect. You see just the great shooting ability there from Gassaway right off the dribble from 18 feet. Here's Saki from the foul line. That's short. Loose ball. Hannah Duncan comes up with it for SNU. 90 seconds to play. 69-48 Crimson Storm. Another wire-to-wire -wire win for SNU. After a wire-to-wire -wire win over UCO last Saturday. Crawford left wing behind the pick from Kakoli. Gives it to her on the die. What a pass over the top of Khan. And Kakoli pays it off with the deuce. One minute to play. Another non-conference test passed by Southern Nazarene this afternoon. Roach, hounded by Duncan in front of the Lions bench. Still looking, still looking. Finally gets it to Saki, and a late whistle is called on Gassaway. A little bump to the back of Saki, and the, once Saki lost her balance, the whistle came. Saki knocks in the first free throw. SNU has really owned this game because of the paint. 44 to 24 on points in the paint this afternoon. Saki goes two for two. The lead is back to 21 at 71 to 50. SNU has led by as many as 23 on a couple occasions this afternoon. Atsuka to Crawford. Fires it to the left elbow to Kakoli. Atsuka uh, on the cut, got it back, saved it to Kakoli. Gassaway on the cut, she's fouled going up. Good active movement by the second unit for the Crimson Storm. And Carly Gassaway getting two free throws with 27 seconds to go. These are big minutes for the Crimson Storm. Reserves their depth is going to be tested at some point this season. And these five need to be ready when that moment comes. Gassaway goes two for two. Pushes the lead back to 23. No shot required for the Lions as the final 20 seconds tick off. And SNU as Saki to the left elbow. Pumps, pulls up, and rattles in the jumper. Saki now with eight. Atsuka across half court, gets the stop sign from the bench, and that's how this one is going to end. Southern Nazarene, a wire-to-wire -wire win in the Central Region as they take down last year's Central Region finalists, Missouri Southern State, 73-52. And 
And we'll look forward to hopefully seeing these two again in March, wherever the Central Region Tournament is held. But a great performance this afternoon for Southern Nazarene. 73-52, the final score. Let's run through the numbers for you. SNU shoots just 43%, but they shot 50% in the second half, and including 16 of 17 from the free throw line. To get the win today, Missouri Southern, or SN, excuse me, SNU, one of 12 from three-point range today, but it didn't matter as they finished 20 of 23 from the free throw line. Missouri Southern, just 32% shooting today. Two of 16 from three-point range. That'll help SNU's three-point defense, which was already at 19.5%. But 12.5% today for the Lions will only exacerbate that number. And 12 of 17 from the free throw line. The Lions had 19 turnovers, leading to 17 SNU points. The Crimson Storm with 15 turnovers, leading to 10 Lions points. SNU 14 to 7 on the fast break. Both teams with 11 offensive rebounds. The Lions 11 second chance points, 8 second chance points for the Crimson Storm. Again, the Crimson Storm dominated in the paint, 44 to 24 in the paint. Led by Hannah Giddy, 20 points, 12 rebounds, nine blocks, one block shy of a triple-double. Sure, we could go back on the film and reanalyze the game and maybe find, scratch out another block in there somewhere and adjust those stats for that triple-double. But a dominating performance from Hannah Giddy, who had 16 and 7 and 7 in the first half alone this afternoon. But it was Lauren Reether and Abby Giles who took over the load in the second half. 16 points, 5 rebounds, 7 assists, 4 steals for Lauren Reether this afternoon. 10 points, 8 of those coming at the foul line for Abby Giles. 8 points for Emily Monahan, 6 for Shannon Burton, 7 for Jenna Bay, 4 for Carly Gassaway, and 2 for Anna Kokoli off the bench. For the Lions, nobody in double figures this afternoon. Eight points apiece for Caitlin Honeycutt, Brandy Hudson, and Maggie Saki. Six points for Ryan Franklin. Seven for Chrislyn Jones. Two for Reese Webb. Four for Mia Topping. Two for Kennedy Roach. And four for Hannah Berg. All in all, a dominant defensive performance for the Crimson Storm today. Second game against a Central Region Tournament team from a season ago and the second time SNU has won by double figures. They beat Minnesota State Mankato and St. Joe's back on November 10th by 17 and this one a 21 point wire to wire win over Missouri Southern. These are the wins that you gotta have to keep your strength of schedule and your RPI up as the season goes along and these those two wins in particular are going to serve the Crimson Storm extremely well later in the season. We'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll be joined by Hannah Giddy, our player of the game, and SNU head coach Trent May. Don't go anywhere. Our postgame show coming up next.
And welcome back to the Sawyer Center. The Crimson Storm get the big win over Missouri Southern State, 73-52. to Joined now by Hannah Giddy, double-double, 20 points, 12 rebounds, one block shy of a triple-double with nine. I was saying on the broadcast, I'm sure we could go back on the video and find you another one. But just a great win for you guys today. Um, just tell us a little bit how it came to be. Yeah, it was a great win. I mean, we were all together. Um, you know, we battled together. We Defensively, I thought we were really good. We knew the scout. We locked in today and yesterday. And so I think um, as a collective, we did a really good job offensively and defensively. And, yeah, it was a big win for us. How big was it for you personally? A bit of a struggle early in the season just shooting the ball. How big was it for your confidence to really get going early, 10 points in the first quarter? It was huge. Um, like you said, I've been in a bit of a slump, and I knew that there was a, it was about to come. Um, and, you know, I've just been working hard at practice and trying to just get my shot back, and I knew I, you know, I can make those shots. So, um, yeah, this game was really big for my confidence tonight. Coach May, did you guys know favors in the non-conference with a really tough schedule? It's the second time you guys have faced a fellow tournament team from last year in the Central Region. Second time you've come out with a double-digit win, though. Mm -hmm. Do you guys do you feel like you guys have kind of noticed that and risen to the occasion a little bit? Yeah, for sure. I think our schedule has been really great. Um, you know, tough of the team. It's it's better for us. We're going to get better every every game, and I think that's what we really need coming into the you know conference and. Um, yeah, we battle every game, and we're always together, and we always get a 20-point you know, win, so it's been really good. Coach Mays mentioned chemistry a lot in the early going. From your vantage point as a player, a, a big part of that, uh, what has that been like, and how have you guys been able to maintain that chemistry from a season ago? Um, well, I love the girls, and everyone gets along really well, so chemistry is massive in our team, and you know, Coach makes sure that we all get along and when we do team activities all the time together to you know get that chemistry so off the court on the court we're together always and um yeah I love playing with my my girls so it's fun obviously not going home for Thanksgiving since uh, that's tomorrow <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but uh how do you put your Aussie flair on Thanksgiving tomorrow <laughs> um we don't really do much we just usually you know get have someone cook for us and then we just eat food like our normal home cooked meals at home so but, yeah, I'll be with my brother, so it'll be still good. Has Coach May said to hold off on thirds and fourths and just stick with seconds since you have a game on Saturday? <laughs> no, he hasn't, but <laughs> I will probably have to stick with seconds. Yeah. Awesome. Congratulations on a big win, Hannah, and we'll see you on Saturday. Appreciate it. Thank you. We'll be back with Coach May in just a moment. And we're back with head coach Trent May after SNU's big win. And uh, Trent, two wins against fellow Central Region Tournament teams last year, two double-digit wins. How big was this one today? It was great. You know, what a great turnout, first of all. Love the fan support. You know, really good energy. It's hard when you play, you know, a 3 o'clock game before Thanksgiving and the holiday. And so I really appreciate the, you know, the friends, families that uh, turned out today. So it was, it was a fun atmosphere. Thought our girls did a really good job battling all the way through and, and just staying to what we do. You know, we talked about really rising up to the level of your training before the game. I thought our girls did a great job of doing that today. Missouri Southern came in averaging 80 points through their first two games. You guys held them to 52 today. What was working for you guys to be so locked in defensively? Well, my players, I think they look at me like I'm crazy at the end of the game because, you know, we don't have to give up 50. You know, you don't have to, you know, and that's the greed part. And it's like, you know, they scored eight minute, eight points in, in a minute all because of fouls, you know, and that's the part. But, I, I yeah, 52 points, great job um, with uh, just understanding the scouting report. Our, our, my staff, you know, I, I just – I don't know if there's a better staff, to be honest. I, I am a blessed. It's Thanksgiving, but I'm, I'm thankful in so many ways. But uh, my staff does a great job of game planning. They do a great job of putting a scouting report together. And our girls, thought uh, I thought they did a great job executing that today. Every game is the same. They all mean the same. It's one win or one loss. But this is two big wins that will matter a lot come March. Have you seen your team kind of rise to the occasion in those two? I have. And, and sometimes, you you know, you, you sit back in an amazement and, you know, not because of the scoreboard, but just because of who they are on a daily basis, you know, that they are um, – the character matters. Um, we have talent as well, but and so when you have great talent and 
and character than you know sky's the limit and what you're able to do and so you know and i'm thankful for that luke in, in, in a lot of ways because again that's something that you just can't put a price tag on and you hope that you recruit to it it doesn't mean that people will have the buy-in so thankful for every single girl on that roster who has buy-in and believes in what we're doing and and we challenge them every day you know but they still they still they're they're willing to meet that challenge and, and they're not perfect and nor will i ever be but um, i'm thankful for their efforts and their togetherness just spoke with Hannah. Big game for her, just a block shy of a triple double. I'm sure you can go back on the film and uh, find yeah, another one. Probably a couple. Probably a couple. <laughs> yeah. But how big was that for her, confidence wise, getting off to a good start? It's been a little bit of a struggle from the field early in the season, but starting the game five for five in the first quarter, how big was that for her? Well, I wanted to grab the mic and when she said slump, because like I told her many times, she's not in a slump. If you look at her stats and her categories and the way she affects the game, there is no slump. You know, tonight was just you know um, icing on the cake. You know, the cherry on top. You know, she's she's just fantastic. She she affects the game in so many ways and proud of her just, you know, and today I know it felt it felt good because, you know, she was on all cylinders. But even when she's on a couple, it still it still uh, puts us in a, in a great, um, you know, in a, in, a, in a great spot because just who she is and what she does on the floor. Another game, another strong second half performance offensively in particular. What are you saying at halftime? That's really, uh, that's really working. Oh, uh, you know, I can't repeat that. I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, no, we just, you know, we challenge them. I mean, because again, it's like again, what are the things we've been trained to do? Are we doing those things? Are, are we, are we okay with getting by? Are we really, you know, uh, we talked about just winning versus uh, beating somebody. And you know, I want to beat somebody. I want it to be a beating. I want to beat, you know, um, Old Testament beatdown. You know, is what I want, right? I mean, and so, but when you win, you're thankful for that. But it's like, you know, we're, we, we practice every day to beat people in, in all phases of the game and so when we do that you know and so we just remind them challenge them and you know make sure we have the the mental focus that we need coming out of halftime but i need to i need i guess i need to save my halftime speeches for pregame but you know um i just don't want to start the game out you know mad and frustrated and you know if my horns out and my things out hannah mentioned you put no uh number of helping limits on them in the post game conversation for tomorrow just curious what do you go back for the most at the Thanksgiving spread? Oh, uh, the, the sandwiches with the rolls. You just throw everything on rolls like about five, six hours later. You know, you just get the great rolls and you just put everything on those rolls and eat the little sandwiches, little sliders, man. The Thanksgiving Day sliders, man, those are the go-to. Absolutely. Well, Trent, thank you so much for your time. Congrats on the big win, and we look forward to seeing you here on Saturday. One o'clock tip time for the Crimson Storm and Lubbock Christian. We'll have full coverage here on the SNU Athletics YouTube channel. For all of us at SNU Athletics, I'm Luke McConnell saying happy Thanksgiving from the Sawyer Center.